Costage, Sajay, Erin, Numda, Eradia, so Penti Costage, Sajay, Erin, Numda, Penti Costage, Erido, Penti Costage, Erido, Erido, Abumemu, Anina, Erido, Erido, Erido.
shall we say to the Canadians? Canada for all to you the Abu. God bless you. And to the United States, we're going to call all the pastors, leaders in the region, and also all those that came from other assemblies outside Chicago region. Amen.
Sing Mama Becky for such a lovely song. At this point, we're going to hear the word of God. By the word, He created the world. And by the same word of God, He sustains it. Beloved, I have the singular honor to introduce to the podium our own national head, Apostle Michael Achiba. Shall we put our hands together for the Lord? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's take our Bibles, phones, iPads, even as we read from the scriptures. Ephesians chapter number 3. We want to read from verse 20 and 21. And our second scripture reading will be taken from Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 29. I read from the ESV, Ephesians 3.20. Now to him who is able to do, to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Here in this passage, I want to emphasize that God has deposited something in you as a Christian, as a believer, as a child of God. Certain capabilities, skills, to do more than what you think is possible. And I want to trust the Lord that, Apostle, even as you begin another assignment, a new assignment in Chicago region, God has deposited something in you. Something that is far more greater than what you think is possible. And I know by the end of your ministry in Chicago, we will all witness that indeed territories has been conquered, leadership and young people have been tapped Potentials in this area and in this region will be tough even as the Lord through you work in some of our lives. Oh, hallelujah. As I said, Apostle Yadom is a man who can see far beyond what ordinary leader can see. And we thank God for the song being registration this morning that we serve the God who can see far and there are certain things he will begin to do in your life that you may not understand until you get there. Oh hallelujah. Yeah. Our second passage we want to read Genesis 1.26 which is a very familiar a scripture that some of you always read. Then God said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over fish and the sea of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them. 
And God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. And fill the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruits. You shall have them for food. Amen. Amen. I pray this morning that Apostle, the Holy Spirit will grant you the grace and give you everything that you need to succeed in the land of Chicago region. Amen. I want to share with you a message that I have entitled Living Out your God-given potentials as you impact generations. In other words, put to practice the God-given potentials in you as a Christian, in you as a church leader, in you as a pastor, even as you impact your generation. Amen. Greater one, he is our God. Now like him, he is within Almighty. God will help you to discover those things so that you will not live as an ordinary Christian. Oh, hallelujah. What the Lord has deposited in you is there to meet the challenges and the problems of your generation. The challenges in the church, challenges in your communities, challenges in your generation. It is there. It is there. It is there. Oh, hallelujah. In life, many people live or go about their life suffering. Do not enjoy the potential, the blessings that the Lord has given them. All because not because they do not know things around them. All they see is the problems. Oh, I know this is an issue. I know this is an imp impediment. This thing I can't do. This thing I can't do. Those things I can't do. And we will have excuses all the time. Why? Because of what we see. People suffer. 
People go through issues because of that. But the key here is that there is something that you do not know. There is something about you, something within you, that God has planted it there to overcome that problem, that challenges that you see. Until you discover it, you will walk and die as a poor Christian. Why? Because though the things that are there to make you overtake those things, those challenges, meet those needs, are there, but you do not know. But I pray that God will definitely open our eyes, our spiritual eyes, to be able to see the possibilities, the capabilities that are in us. Oh, hallelujah. You've been praying for certain things, depending on other people to do certain things for you, but those things may be in your house. Those capabilities, those possibilities are just around you. So I want to encourage you that from today going, you're not going to live by sight. By the things that you see. But depend on the word of God. That there is something in you. That is far more greater. To accomplish whatever your heart desire. In Jesus name. Amen. Apostle Adam, I know you. And I pray that you will be able to discover the potentials in this region. The ideas that were never shared. The visions that never became reality. The untapped resources that are locked in young people. That's right. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. You are going to tap them and you are going to use them. Yes. I thank God for your life. I thank God for your life. For becoming father to many young ministers. When I said I can't do it, you will tell me, Yao, you will do it. You are a man of vision. You could even see far more than I could see. I saw myself as a young person who is in this country, came to this country just to do my own thing enjoying life and supporting the ministry supporting your ministry but you saw something in me that even I myself couldn't see you saw something in Johnny that probably he didn't know you saw something in Folsom that probably he didn't know I remember before you left Chicago and at that very moment you have planted a church PIWC as the person was a deacon, and you said, I think this man can handle it. Thank God for your life. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. The secular world knows that many people were born or are born with special grace. Even the world, though, the world knows that. And the great man theory indicates that some individuals are naturally gifted with divine inspiration and right characteristics such as personal charisma, intelligence, wisdom, ability to positively influence their generation. And the world knows that. The world knows that. That is why this morning the Lord is encouraging us that there is something in you as a young person, something in you as a pastor. God has sent you that place for a reason. God has placed you in that ministry for a reason. You are in that family as a, a husband, as a wife, as a child for a reason. Something in you. The world knows that. In American history, people that I'm talking about are just, some of them are George Washington. There was something in him. And he had to leave it out. He needed to practice it. 
people like Abraham Lincoln, Martin Luther King Jr., and the rest who exercise, put their leadership qualities into practice. In our current generation, those who are alive, we have Bill Clintons, we have Bill Gates, we have Billy Graham, and all those people that realize that there is something in them that they need to leave it out. Leadership qualities that they need to bring it out to direct and to lead their generation, to lead their country. In the Church of Pentecost, we have James and Zoviah Magiones. We have the painters, we have the workers, we have the natis, we have the mediacos, we have the edges, we have Mama Obo, Addison and the rest with their inspirational music. My heart was full with joy when I saw the, 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 the musicians, our brothers and sisters who were leading that worship. Oh, hallelujah. There is something in you. Something in you. Your song alone can move mountains. Oh, hallelujah. In our current generation, we have people like Apostle into me at the age of 40 years becoming the chairman of this great church. 22 years, God tapped a young man called Apostle and Opoku Ojina and begin to use them. And they are continually putting to practice the qualities that are in them. If you as a deacon, you as a deaconess, you as a pastor, you as a member, will put your qualities, God-given qualities, to practice. This church will move far. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I want to challenge you this morning that each and every one of you, the Holy Spirit has deposited something. And that thing is called seed. A seed in you. Why don't you say it with me? Seed. 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 Oh, hallelujah. And it's not ordinary seed. It's a special seed. And that seed has the potential to do so much. And that is what I am going to share with you about that special seed. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. It takes a great man and woman to discover potentials in other people. Let me take it again. It takes a great man and a woman to discover the potentials in other people's life. But it will take the spirit of humility of the young one to develop it. Said by Ajman Amorakum. It takes the great man and a woman to discover potentials in other people's life. Abozo. And indeed, you are a great man. Yes, yes. But it takes the spirit of humility of the young to develop it. I know as Abozo is going to begin his apostolic ministry here. God is going to grant him the grace to discover all the potentials in you as a young person, in you as a woman, in you as a man. But it will take the spirit of humility to develop it. Let's take the background of Genesis 1 as we just read. When God created Adam and Eve, the Bible says that Mrs. Adam and Mr. Eve was a couple that God deposited something in them. And that seed has the potential to be like God in character. One seed that was deposited has the potential to do so much. 
But I want to handle with you or talk to you about two or three of them. One is the ability to be like God in character. The second potential was that the ability to be in charge and to manage God's resources. Ability to be like God. Let's create man in our image. God said that take control, manage the resources. And that resources were the people. Money and talents. We are therefore responsible and accountable for every good and bad that happened to these resources. Apostle, you've been posted here to raise people that their character and their behavior will portray Christ. Not only that, but manage the resources, the people, their talents, and their finances. The next thing was that God, through his wisdom, in that seed, he granted humanity, or Mr. and Mrs. Adam, the potential to be fruitful. In other words, potential to grow, potential to expand, potential not to be stagnant. I pray that if your life has become stagnant, in the name of Jesus, we set you loose. Amen. That you begin to move, even as the Holy Spirit has begun. Hallelujah. Amen. And the first family, for them to be able to accomplish what the Lord has given them, and to do well, with this seed, the Bible says immediately they were great. Uh, Adam was created. God breathed into him, and he became alive, both physically and spiritually. I pray that if you are here and you are not alive spiritually, you can be here and not alive physically. But someone can be here physically, but spiritually. You are dead. I pray that the power of this potential that is in you will kick in you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's now see the, 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 the rule and the formation of this seed. The seed that God gave Adam and Eve or planted in them, that seed has two parts. It could be divided into two. One part of the seed was given to them to meet their physical need. God knew that Mr. and Mrs. Adam, humanity, you and I, will need physical things in life. And he made provision before you were born. Before this planet Earth came to pass. So he wanted to tell Adam and Eve that don't worry about anything. I will take care of it. Your physical need. I pray that your physical needs will be met in Jesus' name. Abosu. For as long as you're going to be in this station, the Lord wants me to encourage you that you don't have to worry about the thing. Just keep on keeping on. Yes. And fulfill His purpose in your life. Because He will take care of all the physical needs. Even as you take care of the spiritual needs of others. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. What it means is that when you read Matthew 13, the Bible tells us that when you talk of seed, 
and I'm talking about good seed. Good seed are the people in the kingdom. So even as God has promised to meet our physical need, in the kingdom, if you are a seed, then he is expecting you to meet the need of others. You are a seed, I am a seed. And God created us, this seed, to meet the need of people. And Matthew is telling us that we, those who are good seed, are the people in the kingdom, Christians. So God is telling us this morning that I must meet your need. And you must meet my need. Meaning we're going to need each other. In other words, in the kingdom of God, everybody is relevant. Yes. Pastors cannot do it without members. Members cannot do it without pastors. Pastors cannot do it without the apostles. Apostles cannot do it without the apostles and leadership. We are here to meet each other's needs. And if that part is done, God will make sure that all the time He will supply the seed. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I pray that the Lord will supply your needs. Amen. Matthew 6 25 tells us that we shouldn't be anxious for anything, He will supply it. Amen. I don't know the challenges that you're going through this morning, I don't know what you are going through this morning, but the word of God is telling us that. He will meet your need. Oh, oh, he will meet your need. According to the riches that are in Christ. He will meet your need. Apostle, the Lord will meet your need. The resources, the finances, whatever you need to be able to make it among the Chicagoans, the Lord will supply it. Amen. Brothers and sisters, don't worry about the thing. Because the Lord is in control. He is in control. Whether we see it or not, He is in control. He is in control. The second part of the seed was there to meet spiritual needs of humanity. To meet spiritual needs. To meet spiritual needs. It is therefore our responsibility to make sure that this precious seed in us will be nurtured in prayer, grow in prayer, in order to bear a lasting fruit. To accomplish God's desire for creating us, the potentials in us to be like Christ, to be like God. To be like God in love. To be like God in faithfulness. To be like God in self-control, in gentleness. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentle, uh, gentleness, self-control. And against such things, there is no law. God wants you to be like him. And that is why he has planted in you this potential. The other side of the seed is there. You don't have to struggle for it. What it is is sometimes people try on their own to love and to be loved. They try so much to live in peace with one another. But that is not your work to do. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. When you think you can do it, you try and you fail. You want to live in peace with everybody. You do your best, but you fail. God wants you to relax this morning. And allow him, allow him to do it. Let me give you a scenario. 
When you as a human being think that you are weak and you cannot do it, that is when the Holy Spirit will come in and accomplish it. Every seed that is planted, get in the, that soil, on that ground. The heat over there will cause it to die. And out of that process, the Lord will cause that seed to germinate. Unless you die to self, you tell yourself that I cannot do it. Lord, I want to be like you. I want to love like you love. I want to live in peace with everyone. I want to live out this potential, but I can't. When you tell him that you can't, that is when he will come in. I pray that from today going, even as much as you have tried, the Holy Spirit will take over. He will take over certain things in your life. Amen. Amen. Now let's jump the, a little bit deeper when you talk of potentials to be like Jesus or God in character. When God created this seed and breathed it into Adam and Eve, God was expecting that from that moment, they will be able to live out, they will be able to demonstrate this love, this patience, this gentleness. But unfortunately, unfortunately, in Genesis chapter number 3, when man died spiritually, both the first side of the seed and the second part of the seed died with him. Died with him. And that is why as a human being, as much as you try, you can't. You can't. There are certain weaknesses, and that is all that we see as human beings. I want to encourage you. Apostle Yadam was here when I was here one day to minister, and those who will remember, there was something that he said. And whenever Apostle Yadam will minister, this is what I do, and I want to encourage you to do. When I was a presiding elder, even till now, whenever he mounts the podium to minister, I'll be writing my topics. I'll be receiving the ministers. You need to pay attention. The Holy Spirit will keep dropping certain topics for you to treat. He said that little did the apostles of old knew that Paul, who was Saul, the murderer, Behind that matter, behind that character, there was apostolic ministry. If you don't take care in the church of God, you will write everybody off. You will say that oh, there is nothing good in this person, nothing good in that person. But behind that, behind that murderous attitude, character, there was apostolic ministry. Don't let us take things at the face value. What you can do, I can't. What I can do, you can't. But there is something in you this morning that the Lord wants me to assure you. Though by default, in the Garden of Eden, when man died spiritually, they began to demonstrate the other side, which is the seed of the enemy. In Genesis chapter number 5, Galatians chapter 5, 19, we don't want to go through that. But I want to encourage you, even as people see, whatever they see about you, whatever they know about you, whatever you know about your friend, your young neighbor, I want to challenge you that if you will keep on praying for that person, there is something better, better behind that qualities and that qualities are those qualities that God wants us to possess. Hallelujah! Amen. This morning, thank God you've been positioned in Christ to live out lives that are in Christ. 
This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become new person. The old things are gone. A new life has begun. Amen. Though we were dead in that garden, and all that people see around you is those characters, but from today going, you are going to portray, you are going to live out this godly character to love the unloved. There are some people, they are very difficult people to love them. But God wants you to love them anyway. Apostle, you will find people. But you will find people. But you will find people. Oh, hallelujah. Catch the only out to say, Me do. Me do. Me do. And you can't do anything about it. I, I, the PIWC here have a slogan. How did you say that? I love you. Uh -huh. Oh, I, I love you unconditionally. You can't do anything about it. Amen. Amen. Let's see the next potential that God has deposited in you. The potential to be in charge and to manage God's resources. Apostle. Ability to handle people with extra care. And that is what you need as a leader of this great church. Ability to handle people with care. The next thing is ability to handle God's money. And ability to handle talents. As a matter of fact, the most difficult resources to manage on earth is human being. And in the church, the most difficult people to manage, excuse me to say, I will explain it, please don't jump into conclusion. It's not the members, but it's the pastors. They are good resources. And I want to explain it to you. In the, it's biblical. It's biblical. It's biblical. It's only I who can say this. Now we call What it is is that Adam and Eve were distant pastors in the Garden of Eden. And God created them to manage resources. But God finds it very tough to manage them. Why? Because they were created as managers. And to manage managers is difficult. In their minds, as a leader, as a deacon, as a deaconess, as an elder, it's difficult to manage them. Why? Because God created them to manage resources. Leaders managing the local affairs. Pastors managing the districts. That is what they know best. So if you come back later and tell a deacon or a deaconess or a pastor to do something differently. No. God found it very difficult. But I pray that the Lord will give you grace. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Not only pastors, but the deacons and deaconesses. And the elders sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> There is nothing wrong about it. We were created to be managers. Created to be managers. Take dominion over everything. Handle it the way I want you to handle it. There was nobody but God who was to come and supervise. And when he came there, when he arrived, these guys were nowhere to be found. Sometimes you go to a station and the pastors may not know where to be found. The leaders may not be there. But I pray that God will grant you a grace as a pastor to be able to manage the resources. Because if you manage it well, behold, a day will come that those difficult ones will become the treasures of the church. You go to a station and, oh, this person is very difficult, that person. Such are the very people that will try to shape you. Thank God I received my shapings in Chicago. Yeah. And in North Carolina. We are proud. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Because 
in Dallas, Texas, I was a baby and my dad and my mom was, was pampering me. Remember going to conventions and other things, I will still go and be breastfeeding. I go to him and say, Apostle, we are all going to the same stage. And I don't think I can, I can do it with you. So, please, I need help. How do I go about this? This is what I'm talking about. And this man of God will find time putting his own aside and going through scriptures. Yeah, you can do this. You can. I will be crying and so mommy will be telling me, yeah, Elder Mike. It's sweet. Maybe it's so for it's so for Mike. Because my first station, I was working with them. Mama, thank you. Amen. Papa, thank you. They pampered me. But when I was alone, other people shaped me up. And I thank God for that. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. The very people that you think probably they may not like you. So you want to handle them differently. Pastors, we need to be careful. Yes. Such are the true people that will stand behind you. Yes. People that Papa will tell you, oh, I, I, about so everything is fine. Yeah. These are the very people that a day will come, oh, you catch it and But I know you are a man of wisdom. Yes. To be able to handle people with care. Some of them may come to you as being rejected by their families. Joseph was rejected by his families. But then God, in the house of Potiphar, he became a blessing to that family. They may come to you as the angel visited Sarah and Abraham. They didn't know them from anywhere. But when they were able to entertain them through these visitors, they receive their blessings. Let's handle one another with care. Right. Extra care. Amen. They may come to you as a babysitter or as a house help. The army soldier, neighbor, the house help, it was that true little girl, that, that little girl, that he received his healing. People may come into your life if you don't handle them with care. Remember when Apostle Adam was coming to from moving from uh, Houston to Dallas, I called the presiding elder and I asked him, Elder Lex, who is this man that I'm going to work with? And he said, Mike, do you know what? We've lost a lot. Why? Because we didn't handle him well. We thought that we were going to stay there stay with them for long and little did we know so even if you have one year hold tight to that man of God and thank God I did oh hallelujah let's handle people we can you may not know them Abraham handled the angels with care and God said hey can we hide anything from this man all because of the way he handled them. Rahab handled the spies we came. We will come back and destroy the whole place. But I want you to mark on this window. If you don't tell anybody what we came here to do, we will spare you and your family's life. May we handle each and every one we can. Because you never, never know. You never, never know. Never, never know. The one sitting beside you is in the nature or created in the nature of God. He is mini God. God has certain things concerning his life. And if you don't handle him, we care. A day will come that you regret. I wish. I handle this person. Finances are something that God wants you to manage. Without finances, the church will not move. It's on this wheel 
that our churches are expanding. And I know you are a man of principle. Hallelujah. And to us, from time to time, God will bring us something. He will bless you one way or the other with money. You need to handle it with care. You don't buy because everybody is buying. You don't spend it because everybody is spending. Handle those resources with care. And finally, talent. 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 Let's tap the talents in the church. The young ones, where my passion is. The reason why I keep, I have this thing in me about these young people is when I was young, or oh now I'm old, with all this gray hair, and very soon Obama may be, his hair may be even, mine will be wider than him. Somebody gave me a chance. And again, that is him. You can clap. And in all my ministry, a lot of leaders, I have met other mentors, including him, have given me chances upon chances. So I need to give other people chance in life. What I have received, I must be able to give it out. Because it's just grace. Who am I? All of you know me. I am nothing. I don't know anything. So if God has given me this grace, I also need to grant it, give it out. Apostle, there are so much talent in Chicago. Yes. Yes. Chicago before was a place that some ministers, those who just came in, didn't like it. Oh yes. And I said this thing before. Chicago, nobody wanted to come to Chicago. But when I came in, I realized that there are potentials. Untapped ones. Potentials that are locked in these people, men and women. And I want to encourage you as leaders, as pastors in this region and in this nation, that financial potentials, technological, theological, medical, sports, education, and other specialists, that are among us, those in fashion and other things. We need to tap these resources, invest in these resources, and encourage them to live out, practice these potentials. And in the next five years, within Vision 2021, you and I will see what the Lord will do. Apostle, if you do so, Chicago is going to explode. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. The Lord himself will bring expansion. Yes. Now everybody want to be come, uh, want to come to Chicago. Sir. Everybody want to come to Chicago. Sir. The pastors. <laughs> and it's true. Chicago, you are the best. Yeah. Amen. Finally, finally, the next potential is potential of fruitfulness. God wants you to increase. So he has deposited in you the ability to increase in life and in all areas of your life. To produce. To produce. To expand. To conquer territories. Both physically. He wants you to grow numerically, spiritually, and physically. The land produces vegetables. All sort of seed-bearing plants. And trees with seed-bearing fruit. They are seed produce plants and trees of the same kind. And God saw, saw that it was good. Oh, hallelujah. We will see the expansion and we all of us will testify that indeed it is good. I strongly believe that it's about time that Chicago will expand. And soon and very soon, not only 
assemblies will be created, district will come out of it, and another region will come out of Chicago region. All to the glory of God. God is going to extend your territories as individuals. God is going to expand his kingdom. And he's going to raise giants in the kingdom of God in this region. When we are looking for pastors, when we are looking for people of God who will stand in the gap for the church, Chicago will be a first place to call on. And I know what I'm talking about. Spiritual growth, physical growth, financial growth are going to be seen in this church and in the life of individuals like never before in the history of the Church of Pentecost, not only Chicago, but in USA. As I end, there is something in you that nobody knows, including you. But I pray, as leaders, the Lord will open our eyes to be able to discover the potential in, in others. Because it takes the great men and women to identify the potentials in others. But church and young people, it will take spirit of humility to be able to develop it. What I receive from the Lord is what I have shared with you. It's a good luck. Bless you. This moment we want to invite Apostle Yadu and family to please come up here. We want to introduce the family, the first family in this region to you. Talk of PKs, pastor's kids, and his dad was Pastor E.K. Ogusu, retired of the Church of Pentecost. We have a big sister here. Please be on your feet so that they will see you. Put your hands together, my dear man. Apostle and the mother was called Comfort Ogusu. I've also had <laughs> four biological kids and also four spiritual kids. So he had eight children. The other day when we were going to Houston, I just mentioned about the eight and everybody, actually nine, and everybody was where are they? We have Emmanuel, we have Princess, we have Junior, Sabesen. Put your hands together for them. As the biological ones. And the spiritual ones, we have the first born Apostle Johnny. Who's Apostle Johnny answer? Cut off! We have Pastor Forson. We have Pastor Amponsa. We have Apostle Mbayani. And we have Pastor Tumbuya. And of course, Uncle Mike. Apostle was called into full time ministry 1999. Confirmed as full overseer 2001. Called into past streets 2003, appointed as area head three years after 2006, called into apostleship after two years 2008, national head 
for Germany from 2011 through 2014, a national head for Canada 2014 through 2016. Church, we are blessed to have the man of God, Apostle Samson Ofori Yadon. Amen. At this moment, we are going to pray for them. Um, then we will ask Canadians, you cried today. You've cried already, right? You cried. You need handkerchiefs? I have some tissues here. Okay. Before we pray for them, why don't you come? Who is going to hand over? We want those people to come forward. Oh, Azaki. I'm sorry for you. The man is gone. Over. Come, come up here. And who is doing the ladies' parts? The national women's. We have Pasasaki and also the national women's leader of Canada. Your name? Florence. Sister Florence Appa. And do we have the regional deacon here? Yeah, we have the regional deacon and also deacon, regional deacon from Canada. Okay, you can join the. Do we have the regional women's leader, Mama Francis? Please come. What you do best. Praise the Lord. Oh, I said praise the Lord. Uh, this is a bitter sweet moment for Canadians. And um, you know the Americans are saying Apostle is coming home. What you do not know that Ameri I mean uh, uh, Apostle Yadom and his wife has found a great home in Canada. <laughs> And so we want you to know that uh, anytime you want to come back, we are ready to receive you. <laughs> and uh, secondly, secondly, uh, on a more serious note, we found in Apostle a friend. We found a brother. We found a pastor. And we found an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is why you see so many Canadians here. We are here to show our love. And we want to encourage the people of um, Chicago that you take the best care of Apostle Mama Millicent and the children and you will receive the results. <laughs> so today, in the name of God the Father, and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit we humbly hand over the man of God an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ that we lived with even though two short years but they were very impactful and we pray that the Lord will use them even more in Chicago to his own glory Amen Oh, hallelujah. Oh, your amen is weak. Hallelujah. No, you have to demonstrate to the Canadians that here, when we receive you, we have received you well. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Papa, it says it's all. The amen that we have demonstrated in our response in receiving you said it all. And I believe that in Chicago, we have plethora of gifts, as Apostle Mike said. And you are going to have a lot of gifts that we believe that you will impact. And when Canadians want to call you, you will pick your phone and say that in Chicago, there is no better place than the this city. God bless you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holiness. 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 Mama Millicent has been with us 
for the past two years. And every one of us can testify, every one of us coming from Canada will testify that she has been a blessing to us. She is indeed a mother and a friend. She smiles to everyone and everyone likes to be in her company. Today, as we hand her over to you, we know that you are going to take care of us with jealousy. We are going to miss a lot, but we have to do it. So as I hand over Mama Melissa to you, I'm doing it with the assurance that you are going to take good care of us, of her, just as we did, in Jesus' name. Amen. Holiness. We give God all the glory for what he is about to do in our region. Hallelujah. You can see from our cheerful faces, our smart appearance, even the platform, how it's full with capacity. Our national health, the pastors, the elders, even the congregation that we are expressing something special today. And we are all happy. If you are happy with me, why don't we give clap off to Jesus this morning? Because we are going to welcome mommy back to Chicago, not only to Chicago, but to the USA, America, forever, forever and ever. <laughs> so on this note, Mama, welcome you to Chicago reading in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may take a seat. Can we now have the pillows? Yes, 
on a no so eradia CSCB. On a no so after a wish you more baby Piara or the Nokoi. I saw any and every year in so. So when you answer more, or the Abusia Baby Hintel, Chicago, ha, Yakasa Yadawasi, Mara Okona Onimia Okoye, then your men in the Adansia say Eradi, or the Naye. Ama Aboroso, Ama Achenso. I want you among somebody who was a very independent with him. Emre Muyadi Osufra and Algino so. Marani does all but assign Obemo. Obisona, oh yeah. Now I'm not so so many fragments so yeah, near Macassi. Mara Odena near Busia Abbey was some Nayadi one a ship. Amen. Yakase Eurade one sum na yadi one she. Amen. Yakase Eurade one sum na yadi one she. Amen. Ma watum and also. Amen. Ma onusra and also. Amen. Ma one maya and also. Amen. But Iya and unto the one about Rodia Yimu. Now I said you want about the Kaya or May Yimono. Who are only a Juma Sin? A Juma or the one I shall see. Eurade for one year. Amen. Don't be a hint on the Pamu. Yes, sir. Maranta Nima Wamu. Not a radio opera means to Chicago Hano. Do you want any of them? Amen. Not offer one son, some Evania, a Juma Cassay and Ma. So now, also a year movie at the PA. Marana, I say, and Kokuamo. Do you want a car or Yes, Lord. A radio for one year. Amen. It don't need any of our work. Send your only or judge Elisha and Pi Boson. A rather for a judge and Pi Boson. Say, it don't need any of our work. Send your own Elisha and no more sons who buy or strong. A rather for no more sons who buy or strong. Amen. Napa or G. Ebra was sorry. Napa Connecty. Ebra was sorry. Ma Omosra and Murso. Yes, Lord. Ma Watum and Chenso. When any chain as my four on the way to me, you know, Mammy Nelson and Mutto. Not young for when you're young and mom. What about what she wants, sir? It sounds that Odeno Eradi, I owe deep for a bad in a man on tea. To us, what I'm on the tree. Everybody be a hint of the Biarota. Said the owner of the Swahia or one about a pong. Umpo Ebesi and Oh, no, somebody, and now the power say, I'm born. Somebody, I'm not going to be home. Say, baby, baby, you know, when I'm from home, or your patumo, or your patumo, and Bra Ogusu Bisano, now your home, Juma, now you're the Sedania, you're the mouth. Your mice are once that you're ready. When I'm on my home, on my own, so the other we are. Yes, that's a crowd once so. And Bra, oh, you're the one. You are the man who is here. So to me, be am sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Not a sorry to you, Anna. Yes, we didn't know Chifa one so. Yes, we didn't know Chifa one so. My own bumbo and you can see I'm from a bush. Now, when you want some up, I must say, Sadia Mepo, I tell you, Salam Hoshiano, Sana Bong Crofo and Sarabi Asia. Man and not baby, be on the farm. One nine on sorry, Mono. Iradi ene wan eni ni yin. Adi chibi ya no ma wan asem fufro. Ma wan go fufro. Sra wan go fufro. Yabati wan kano. Na wan na mo hanso. Eyi akuni ni. Ewa reche yimo. Eyi akuni ni. Ewa neshi yimo. Na yade wa sedani wa yeyi yama wan. Iradi shire mana onnomo. Ni ya wa fremo na ohono mosie asana oshe wi asi asana. Bicara saya nyami ya cia nyami apa nyami susun kongkong. Oni muhyam muda. Na ada muka yang nawa sah ada muka bana. Ampa adum emo adum so. Na dia muka syir envi enu mungkin ni emu no. Irade insya mu ane mu. Wo ahane nama hosu. Na asafonongka amen. Amen. Shira o shira shira mami. Susun kongkong. Kani ya shira ta. Ata nyena Shema
Electric, Apostle Samson and Millicent, Yano, with a standing ovation, put your hands together for the Lord. Apostle Yamishro, Yamishro, the only princess in the whole world. world. Imano, God bless you. Sebastian, God bless you. Julian, God bless you. So, mommy, can you please come and get your mom to have a seat, even us, they will come back and respond in a few minutes. But we want to introduce the leadership after which we will allow them to respond and we bring the program to a close. Amen. Uh, Atten, I think your, 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 your business is about to so before then, I want you to introduce, bring forward your executive members and the leaders chief first. Thank you, National Head. I would like to invite Reverend Jehu Jima, who is the regional secretary, Pastor Saka Intiamo, a member of the regional executive committee, Pastor George Mike Potofe, a co-opted member, Elder Albert Boabeng, who is the regional deacon. Elder Dr. Albert Ose, a member. And Elder Samuel Amponsa, a member. These are the executives. The ministry leaders, yes please. Okay, ministry leaders, we have the women's ministry, Dickness Francisca Boabeng, and the PEMEM, Elder Kofi Ansong, Evangelism, Pastor Samuel Nana Yaboa, Youth and Pensa Overseer Benjamin Denchi and the Children's Ministry Dickiness Victoria Abakan Corsa. Apostle, this is the leadership that you are going to work with. You have your executive and also the ministry leaders. Amen. I think they've already been prayed for and they are working. So we will not have to pray for them again. Amen. Amen. But your papa with extra care. Apostle, handle your leaders with extra care. Church, handle your leadership with extra care. Now put your hands together for the leadership. <laughs> Invite the family to respond. Back home. 
we are very, very, very much grateful to our God. And then also to the chairman of the church, the IMD, the general secretary, the rest, the members of the International Executive Council, for the confidence they reposed in us. And their guidance, their support, their prayer support, and support in all diverse ways. We are very much grateful to them, and we pray that they would continue to provide guidance and the leadership needed, the support needed for one to excel. Thank you also for taking the pains to wait upon the Lord to deliver a powerful message. I have taken note. And I promise that we will follow through to my fellow ministers and your wives, be of good cheer. Amen. Amen. I am easy to work with. Very, very easy. Very, very, very easy. Because I know that uh, I am who I am by the grace of God. All you need to do is just do your work and do it well. Case time. Just do it well. No problem. Because we've been called to serve. But if you are serving, don't call Swaba. Chicago, I have not come here. I want to make this plain. I have not come here. It is God who has brought me here. Amen. Because I did not choose to come here. It is God who sent me here. Amen. And knowing this, I am careful to do and only to do the will of God. Amen. If I came here by my own choice, by my own design, by my own authority, then of course, I can take matters into my own hands and do things as I deem fit. But because I know that it is God who has brought me here, I would always make sure that the will of God and the purpose of God is service. I want you to join hands with me. That's all I need. Because I have come here, as God has sent me here, with my God. I just need the people. So join hands with me. And let us move this church to the next glorious Sunday. I know the biggest room in the whole world is room for improvement. So even as I say kudos to my predecessors, with special reference to uh, regional head, Apostle Samuel Arthur. He's done his part, and I want to believe that he's done a good job. Yes. He's done a good job. Yes. At least we have a place to continue. But there is still more for us to do. Because God is a progressive God. Yeah. And one of the things that would arrest progress is when we begin to think that we have done all there is to do. And we have attained all there is to attain. That would arrest progress. So in spite of all the good things we have done, even as we are satisfied with what God has done and continues to do, let us continue to challenge ourselves, knowing that we possess great potentials to impact our generation. I will be very careful to identify the potentials in this region. I will be very careful to identify the needs of God's people in this region. And not only to identify the need, but pray to God that he would enable us that together we will meet the needs of God's people. For what good it is when you have identified a need 
and you have not met it. I pray that we will not be self-seeking. We will be selfless in the discharge of our duties. We pray for God to give us the ability to handle God's people, managing them well, knowing that in the church or in the economy of God's wisdom, there are three resources. That is the word of God, the spirit of God, and the people of God. It's not about money. It is the people who provide the money. It's not about anything. Buildings, God is going to use the people to put up buildings. So the people must be managed well. Thank you, National Head, for the message. But we cannot do it without the Spirit of God. We cannot do it contrary to the Word of God. So let us all be soaked in the Word and in the Spirit. In conclusion, I would want to say that we'll be very careful to handle the young ones, but not neglecting the old ones. Because we know that when energy and knowledge are managed by experience, success is guaranteed. So we are going to manage the young ones without neglecting the old ones. As we come with our energy and the knowledge that God has given to us, we we'll need the experience of the old ones for us to do what is right and do it the right way. May the gracious hand of God continue to be upon us all. Thank you, Chicago. We love you. Have you. Hallelujah.